So I've got this little Milwaukee M18 little half battery here. It's a little 2.0 battery. It works, but it's tired. It runs down quickly and it doesn't stay charged very well. We're gonna rebuild this battery, but while we're at it, we're gonna upgrade it to a 2.5. I'm gonna show you what nickel strips I'm gonna use, what welder I'm gonna use, what cells I'm gonna use, all that good stuff. And the ultimate question is, is this even worth it? I can emphatically say, well, now I'm, I'm gonna wait. Oh, come on! All right, so without further ado, Let's dive right in. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing apart. We have four T10 security bits right here. Very simple, they're all the same size. You don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these. All right, now on these little short packs, you have to cut the sticker right through the middle right here. So I've already done that already on both sides. So once you do that, just go ahead and kind of wiggle the top like so. And then just, if this is tight, this one is coming out loose, but if it's tight, just carefully take a screwdriver, making sure not to puncture any of the batteries, and pry that puppy out of there. Do it evenly from both sides, and you shouldn't have any trouble. All right, so if you're kind of new to working on these things, before you disturb anything, the first thing I would do is take a marker and go ahead and mark the plus side right there. That way there's no mistake you can't possibly get this backwards. Now the plus side is the side that's got this white ring on it right here. The negative side is kind of flat, so that's how you tell them apart. Also, you want to be real careful when you're taking this thing apart because the negative side of the battery is just right here, just right under this jacket right here. So if you take a big pair of pliers and start cutting on that, and you accidentally short this right here to this, you could cause a fire. So you wanna be real careful when you're taking these apart not to cut into the jacket itself, okay? What I will usually do is I'll use a Dremel tool to cut here and here and here and then right here on both sides, all right? So we're gonna do that right now, uh, right after we take off this little um, dot right here that holds the temperature down. Just carefully pry that off these things will usually fall apart when you do this, so you probably won't be able to reuse that. That one might have survived, so we might reuse that. All right, so use the thinnest wheel you got because they cut better on this kind of stuff. And just carefully, just make sure you don't gouge into the battery. Just slowly cut that. All right, now that you've done that, that that will move and come out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. And then when you do this one, cut it across this way. All right, so this side is all loose. I'm gonna do the very same thing on the other side and we'll be right back. All right, so I went ahead and cut the other side exactly the same way. Once you do that, these things will pop right out of here. They will literally just fall out. Now, what do we got here? We have a Samsung 20R. This is a very good battery. I like the Samsung, but what we're gonna replace this with is this Eve battery right here. This is a 2.5 amp hour battery. This is also a very good battery. It's not as good as the Samsung, and if you go to 18650batterystore.com, the Samsung is on sale for the same price as the Eve, but at the time I got this, that wasn't the case. But I have these, so we're gonna use them up. All right, so before we put this thing back together, there's a couple of things I like to do. One is I'll line them all up like this, negatives here, positives here, and I'll check them all to make sure they're all pretty close to balance. Uh, 18650 battery store is pretty good about shipping batteries that are all balanced out, but you should check them anyway, just to make sure. The other thing is, is I'll take a little bit of Deox and I'll put some on a toothbrush and I'll kind of go around and clean everything up a little bit. And if you have a business card handy, which I'm sure you do, just spray a little bit on here and on the pins 
and I'll kind of take the business card and go like this. And this will kind of clean your pins. See that? What a mess. And if you have an air compressor handy, just kind of blow everything off so it's nice and dry when you put it all back together. Now, another thing that I like to do is you'll want to deburr all these things where you cut them right here. Be careful not to damage your temperature probe right here. So you kind of want to hold that out of the way. Just take a Dremel tool and kind of do that. Or if you want to, you can take a little file and file these down. Just make sure there's no burrs on there. Now, if you forget to label the battery, if you flip this upside down, you can see there's a plus right there and there's a minus over there. So they did label it for you from the factory. But if you forget to look for that, you don't want to get this in backwards. All right. So our plus, this is plus right here with the little white circle right here around the battery. So start out here and just alternate every time. Plus is over here. And then we wind up with minus on the end. Now, while you're putting this thing back together, it's a good idea to take a wire tie and wrap this around the whole pack. That way you hold it together real good and it doesn't wind up getting loose on you. So let's talk about these nickel strips here for just a second. When you measure the factory ones, they come out to between 10 and 11 thousandths. That's equivalent to about 0.27 millimeters or just under 0.3 millimeters. Now it takes quite a welder to be able to weld that much nickel. I don't have one like that and you probably don't either. If all you have is one of those $60 Amazon battery powered welders, those will work if you use 0.1 nickel plated steel. Nickel plated steel welds easier than pure nickel. What you can do is double those up, weld one layer down and then weld another layer on top of it. And that will work. I've done it that way before. I'm using a little bit better of a welder for this project. I have this CC welder right here that's a capacitative dis discharge type and it will weld up to 0.2, but it doesn't really like doing that. It, it works, but it doesn't work great. In this project, we're gonna be using 0.15 of pure nickel. That works, I've used it that way before. I'm not recommending that you use 0.15 nickel. I'm recommending you do your own research and use what you think is the best one for you and your project and your needs. All right, so let's get back to the video. All right, so all this does, it's in series. So we start out plus here, then it jumps over here, and then these two are connected together right here. Comes back, these two are connected, skip one, these two are connected, and then finally it winds up with negative on the end. So these two are connected, these two, of course you can see wherever the drop down is right here, that those two are gonna be connected. So it's pretty self-explanatory the way this is done right here. That's all there is to it. Now, we're going to spot weld the nickel to the battery, but we're not going to spot weld it to this because this is kind of springy. And if you try to spot weld to that, you can't push down and get a very secure connection. So we're going to be soldering right here. So what you want to do is go ahead and tin these right here in the middle. Keep it as thin as possible and also make sure that this is not touching the actual battery itself because you could melt that jacket and you don't want to do that. And we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So what I've done is, is I've cut four strips just like this that are an inch and an eighth long. And we're going to go ahead and tin this right in the middle, being careful not to get any on the ends because that's where your battery is going to get welded at. So just put a little glob right there. And then what you want to do with these is bend this down just like so because we want to make a little hump in the middle like so. I want to put two dog ears on it, one on each side. Reason being is if you don't put the dog ears on there, if you leave it flat like this side, if you're not watching what you were doing, that can slip underneath that jacket right there and wind up shorting against the negative side that's just right there. So that's why I put those on there, just for that reason. So go ahead and test fit it. Looks like it's going to fit. Then we're going to clamp it on. Like so. 
and let's solder that in place before we weld it. This way there's no risk of heating up the battery. All right, yeah, so I saw that was a little bit crooked when I soldered that, so I melted it back and I fixed it again. Now, if your solder turns out to be a little bit of a kind of a glob right here, what you can do is take your Dremel and shave that back a little bit because if it's too wide, you'll have a hard time getting it back in the pack. Also, I took a little wire wheel here and cleaned up all the flux off of there so it's nice and clean. Now I think we're ready to weld. I'm just going to push that down, push this down. There's a spot weld. Do that again, like so. Be careful to stay away from the edge of the, uh, the strip because if you get the spot welder right on the edge, what will happen is, is it will kind of blow out the edge and you could damage the battery. So stay away from the edge. You want to kind of push it down and then kind of let off the pressure right there. When you're pushing it down, you're kind of pushing it into the battery if it's a little bit bent or something like that. I've also got that set on about a three and a half second delay. All right, so I got this one done here. Now I went ahead and made this little strip right here and welded him on there. That was about a half an inch long, I think if I remember right. And I've tinned both sides of this, so we're gonna go ahead and solder that on now. That's probably good right there. Now I've lost the, stu the stupid little felt pad that went right here on the temperature probe, so I got another replacement model right here. So just use one of these and stick that on there. Just like so. And I'm gonna go ahead, and I haven't done the other side yet, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side exactly the same way, and we'll be right back. So I got this side done just the same way I did the other side. Got the negative one soldered on. This side's done as well. Now I didn't show every single one because it's just repetitive. It's the same thing over and over. Uh, so I think you got that already. Now if you notice here, when you hit the, uh, the status button, you don't get any lights, okay? No problem. Go ahead and plug it into your charger. Just be careful when you're doing it this way to make sure you don't misalign your pins like that. And there we go, we got one bar going. So that's what we expect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and charge this thing out of the case because I wanna double check when it's done to make sure everything is balanced the way it's supposed to be and everything looks normal before we put it back. Okay, so we got our green light on the charger. All the batteries are slightly warm and they are evenly warm, so that's good. Let's go ahead and check our pack voltage. Almost 20.8, that's very good. Let's make sure they're all even. 4.15. Very good, they're all very, very close. All right, so to get this thing back in the pack, these springs have to go on here, right? They, they rest right on here, so to to make that happen, you almost have to put it in upside down like this and kind of angle it in there to get one side started. I know you can't see this. Kind of get one side started like that and then push it over. It's a little bit of a fight. I don't like this setup. And then what you can do is take something else and push it in there to get the other spring on the other side like so. See that? Now the springs work. So go ahead and put the rest of the pack on like that, and we'll put the spring uh, screws back in it. All right, so we got our screws back in. We've got our four indicator lights. 
life is good. Now, if you have a label maker, just make a label right here with the information, the type of battery, the date that you did this, all that good stuff. Try it out in a tool. Everything's working just fine. Now back to that ultimate question in the beginning of the video, is this all worth it? So the, the answer is emphatically hell to the no. That's what I wanted to say at the beginning. It is not worth it. Unless you've got 15 batteries you need to fix up, this is not worth it. If you just want a fun little project, then you might get some entertainment out of that and the satisfaction of doing all this yourself. But as a money thing, if you're trying to save money, you're not gonna save any money. You're gonna take a bath. Why do I say that? By the time you buy a welder, the, the strips of nickel strip, a soldering iron if you don't have it, the solder, all that stuff is gonna add up to $200 plus, plus each battery is about three or $4. So this, this pack, you, you can rebuild it for under $20 as long as you already have all the stuff. But if you have to go out and buy all that stuff, you're not gonna save any money. So I hope that was helpful. All right, thanks for watching this video.